podcast. I am super excited. We're interviewing highly successful digital marketing agencies from across the country on how they're growing and scaling their agency. And I'm really excited that they have Brady Sticker with us from Church Candy. Uh, Brady has grown his agency to, to over seven figures in the last 18 months, working a four-day work week. Yeah. Um, not just not just growing an agency that provides more money and, and freedom, but also serving the kingdom. And I, I think that's yeah. really exciting to kind of that's what you're doing with your business. So without further ado, if you're excited for this interview and you're listening live, give me a yes in the comments. We'll get right into it. So Brady, kind of tell us, tell us a little bit about the agency, where it sits today. Like how many, how many clients, how much revenue, what's the lay of the land? Yeah. So uh, right now we have right around 170 churches that we're actively working with on retainer and our MRR is right around, I think just over a hundred thousand dollars a month. Phenomenal, man. So a great agency you're hearing from, you know, on how he's grown 170 plus clients. Uh, talk to us a little bit about your backstory. Because not everybody knows, like, how did you get into the agency game? Like, what's the what's the, the journey been? Yeah, yeah. So for me, I, if you would have asked me when I was like 18, just graduated high school, I would have told you that I wanted to be a youth pastor. Mm. That I wanted to... Uh, I was gonna to go to Bible college, I was gonna go get a ministry degree, and then I was gonna go work at a church serving in their youth ministry. Like that's what I wanted to do. And uh, I'm gonna get a little bit spiritual and kind of talk about some of that. And so, just cause that's my background. And so I really just felt the Lord, like that's what he was calling me to. And so I graduated high school in 2016. Like keep in mind, I'm 25. I just turned 25 a couple months ago. So I'm very young. Uh, I graduated high school in 2016. I go to Bible college, and at this time, my dad had started an agency called Cairo Candy. A lot of you guys know Billy Sticker. And while I was going to school, he was like, hey Brady, I really need your help in Cairo Candy. And at first I was a little hesitant because my girlfriend's now wife at the time, uh, girlfriend at the time, now wife, she used to work with her family in a restaurant. And so whenever my dad asked me to help with Cairo Candy, I was like, I don't know, man. I, I see how Sarah and her family interact, whenever whenever like they work together and I don't want that. I want you to be my dad. And that like several months go by and then he's like, Brady, I really need your help. And it's funny, he was like, I'll pay you $50 to build out a, this landing page for me. And being 18 year old, like keep in mind at the time I was working at a coffee shop, uh, making minimum wage plus tips and tipping culture back in 2016 isn't what it is today where like people like always ask for tips. So like I was making maybe eight to ten dollars an hour at a coffee shop uh so 50 bucks to build out a landing page was like oh my gosh yeah dad i'll do that and so that was at the end of 2016 uh i just started helping my dad build landing pages for Cairo candy clients and then i started helping managing accounts and building out facebook ad campaigns and then overseeing the team at Cairo candy and we we scaled Cairo candy to multiple seven figures hundreds of clients and all this time I'm going to Bible college and I end up going to help my pastor uh, with Facebook ads. I'm on staff there as a volunteer because church community is doing well and I'm making good money as a 21 year old. Uh, so I'm like, hey, I'll be the youth pastor. You don't have to pay me. I, this is kind of my heart at the church I was at. And I tell my pastor, I was like, hey, look, everything we're doing at, at Cairo Candy, I think the church could really use this. And I, I remember whenever I was even in Bible college, I, I had always just thought I was just gonna go be a youth pastor. And then I started helping with Cairo Candy and it's like, okay, cool, now I'll just be bivocational and I can go help my dad in the agency and then do like youth ministry stuff and not have to depend on a church for a paycheck. And I really just felt the Lord like put in my heart, like, hey, everything you're doing at Cairo Candy, the church needs that. And so whenever I felt that, I went and I applied to graduate early. Like the Bible college I was at, they had a three-year program that I was on track to do. And this was in April. So like a month before that next semester graduated, I went and I was like, I'm done. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and just graduate with a two-year degree and go pursue this dream of starting an agency. And fast forward several years later, I tell my pastor, I was like, hey, I think we need to really double down on Facebook and Instagram ads. We do, and it works great. Our church starts growing, and this is like at the back end of COVID, uh, whenever like churches could barely even meet, but we're in Texas, so 
Uh, go Astros. <laughs> We're going in the playoffs Saturday. Super excited about that. But in Texas, the churches could start meeting again pretty quickly. And so I uh, started doubling down on Facebook and Instagram ads for my church. And then all of a sudden, my pastor's friends start reaching out to me. That like mm -hmm. they have their own churches. And they're like, hey, could you help us? And at the time, I'm full-time at Kyra Candy. I'm a youth pastor. And I'm doing online classes at DBU, Dallas Baptist University. And so I just didn't have time to like take on clients myself to, to help churches. So what I did was I created a course and I was like, hey, I, I can't help you, but let me just create some training videos, get some Loom videos together. And I made a course and I sold it for 500 bucks a piece. Ended up doing a webinar. I got maybe 30 churches live on the webinar. A handful of people watched the replay. I sold like a dozen of them into this program for nice. 500 like that's a, that's a yeah yeah right. for, for being like 21 years old selling a course for 500 bucks like that was solid i was excited got them into the program uh, i get on one of the coaching calls only one guy out of the dozen show up that guy hasn't even started and i was like oh okay well let's just go over some stuff and like the thing is these pastors didn't have time to like go through a training program they're a lot of them were just like, hey, can you just do it for me? And that's when I was like, okay, fine. Yes, I'll just do it for you. So that's really how like Church Community was born. This was in 20, 2021 when I launched the course. And going into January of 2022, we have seven clients. And I feel the Lord put in my heart like, hey, you need to like take this seriously. Without even talking to my dad, I go and buy churchcandy.com nice. and register Church Candy Marketing LLC. Didn't even like run it by my dad. I was like, hopefully he's cool with me, kind of just like piggybacking off of Cairo Candy, Church Candy. Uh, he was cool about it. So, it, it, and Church Candy was born January 2022. We had seven clients at the time. I made my first hire, Lexi. She's still with us today. And then we doubled down on it. And fast forward today, we have what, 15 team members, 15, 16 team members, 170 clients, uh, doing six figures a month. And I, man, like, I, I don't think it's anything crazy that I've done. I just honestly think God has just been given us a ton of favor and blessed us with more than what I've, I could have ever expected. If you would have told me when I was back in Bible college and I felt God call me to, to help churches do their marketing, I, I, I wouldn't, and you like showed me what we're doing now, I wouldn't have believed you. Mm. And so it's been a crazy ride. And uh, it, uh, I, the future is bright, man. We're just getting started. We've got some cool things in the work for the future. And uh, it, it's super exciting, man. So good, man. Well, congratulations. Amazing. If you're excited to hear kind of how he did that, how he landed these 106 clients, be sure to stick around and give us a one here if you're watching live. So you kind of decided you're gonna make the pivot. You're gonna run your own agency. Um, going after churches, so the niche selection piece wasn't a thing, right? You already yeah. you worked in churches, you felt the Lord calling you in that direction, you already gotten some case studies. Um, one of the questions we usually get is like, so how did you go from the seedling of one client to the first five clients? Was it all word of mouth? Like what worked for you to kind of get that that bridge? Yeah, so a lot of it was I had already started to build kind of like this email list whenever I did the webinar, and I was very involved in these Facebook groups uh, for mm. specifically church planters. So in the church world, a church plant is like a brand new startup. And normally like I would recommend an agency, do not work with someone that's a startup. Don't work with someone just getting started. But for us, we love church plants because a lot of them go through training that really equips them to launch a brand new church successfully. And there's a lot of organizations that will fund them and give them a lot of really big financial backing. And so I'm in a lot of these Facebook groups for church planters. And I was just super active in the group. People would ask, hey, what do you do for your Facebook marketing? And I would just respond like, hey, we do X, Y, and Z. We'd love to hop on a call, show you what we do if you want any help with that. And so just being very active in some Facebook groups as well as word of mouth, uh, that kind of got us the first handful of clients um, and, and and then it just kind of <laughs> upward trajectory from there. So good. So practically, there like find the groups that your your prospects are hanging out in, 
He didn't go in and say, hey, you want help with your Facebook ads in the church? He, he added value, yeah. right? He said, hey, look, if you want some help, I'll show you how to do it. And it wasn't a veiled sales pitch. You just kind of showed them how to do it. And actually, they started to lean in. Yeah, yeah. And this one group I'm in, uh, I reached out to the guy that owned it. And I was like, hey, do you mind if I put together a free training uh, teaching how to do Facebook ads? And he's like, yeah, if it's free, that thing would be super helpful. And so I was sure to not... I have a hard pitch at the end. It was legit. I literally gave value. I didn't do Russell Brunson's stack and close or anything. It was, it was gave value, gave value, gave value. And then at the end, I was like, you know, I offer this as a service. If you want me to do it for you, reach out. Um, otherwise, I hope you got some value from this presentation. Have a great day. Like that was that was my pitch. And because I, the last thing I wanted was to start prospecting in this group and you don't want to be the guy that's like self-promoting and being super salesy. Um, I've, I tried that before. I, I, my very first webinar I ever did was very, there was a hard pitch. I did the stack and close and, mm. and it, I got some negative feedback from it. I did get some sales from it. Also got negative feedback and I just don't want to be known as the salesy church guy. <laughs> so uh, now when I do these, I try not to be super pitchy on them and just give value and then give them a next step if they do want us to just manage it for them. So good. So I think what, what we'd love to hear is like, what's, what is it you're doing for these churches? Can you talk a little bit about the program and kind of how you package it and what you're doing for the churches? Yeah. So we don't build websites. We don't, um, we, we have SEO is like an upsell, but our main offer is using Facebook and Instagram ads to help them get new guests. That is our main goal with what we do. And I know like for agency owners watching this, that makes sense. Uh, but there's a lot of church marketing companies that only do graphic design. Uh, because for a church, they always do like presentations every single Sunday, right? And so they wanna have different artwork for whatever sermon series they're in. So there's a lot of marketing companies out there for churches that just do the creative side of things. And I have to be very clear in our messaging we don't, don't do that. We right. don't do that. We're not graphic designers. We don't, we don't even post for you. Our goal is to get new families visiting your church every Sunday. And that's, that's the what. And we do that with Facebook and Instagram ads. That's our main offer uh, to where we build out ads, inviting families in their community to plan a visit to their Sunday service. And so they see an ad. Someone would see an ad from a church saying, hey, you're invited Sunday. Click below to plan a visit. Someone clicks on it. They fill out a form and then they get a text pop up uh, saying, hey, this is Pastor Josh from Seven Figure Agency Church. So you plan a visit for church on Sunday. Uh, and then the pastors are able to use high level to text back and forth with, uh, with the potential new guests and get connected with them that way. So we're essentially a lead generation agency for churches. And our, our main offer is the Facebook and Instagram ads, but we have upsells for doing things like Google ads because uh, Google actually has a program for nonprofits. Google grant? Yeah, the Google grant. And so we offer to manage that for them. We offer uh, SEO. One of the things that, this is actually kind of funny. I didn't want to do anything creative. I, I didn't want to do graphic design. I didn't want to offer video editing, but short form content has just blown up in them in recent years. And looking at Cairo Candy, working with chiropractors, if a chiropractor every single week took time to create content teaching about chiropractic, we would take that content and chop it up into clips and use it in the ads. It would be a no-brainer. That would be something we do at Cairo Candy. So I remember thinking, at Church Candy, why are we not doing that? Mm. These churches would spend thousands of dollars on live stream equipment, and then that content what just, yes, they preach it once, people in their congregation hear it, and then it sits on a YouTube archive, right? And, and so we offered uh, a service to where we would actually chop up their sermons into clips that we could use in the ads and then they could post on social media. That's like the closest thing to creative that we do. And even then I was hesitant to launch it. And what's funny is the reason why I actually first started doing that is because I had a guy that went to my church and I really wanted to hire him full time. He was working with me part time and he was driving trucks. Hmm. And I was like, you know how to edit videos, right? And he's like, yeah, I, I do video editing all the time. He was lying. He did not know how to, <laughs> he did not know how to edit videos. Uh, and I was like, all right, man, I'm gonna, 
out of all the church, we probably had 50 churches at the time, and I got 10 of them to agree to do the sermon clips. Uh, I was like, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get them on board, and that'll that'll be enough revenue for me to still be profitable, and then be able to afford bring you on full time. And so we haven't pushed that service much, uh, but it's an upsell there for people that do want it. We do tell people when they come on board that we offer it, but it's not something that I'm trying to actively push because that is a lot more work uh, having to like edit those videos for them every week. Yeah. But it's it it is a good. It's a great value for them to have that content they could post on their social media. And then it helps our ad buying team because they have new content every week that they can use in the ads. So it is very holistic and how it all works together and helps everything we're doing. Amazing. So so the main thing is we're gonna bring in new new guests to the yeah. church, right? And that's the main thing they want. You do that through Facebook ads, TikTok ads, and just generate awareness. Yeah. You also couple that with marketing automation on the back end to actually make sure those people show up mm -hmm. um, and then you got upsells on top of that what can you talk a little bit about what that core program price wise is yeah so we are very low ticket but high volume and like my heart with this is not to just make a whole lot of money and go sit here on the beaches in miami and just live it up as a lifestyle like my heart is and I've told Josh this, like, I don't care about our revenue. Like, obviously I do, because I've, like, I've got one of my team members here. Like, I want to make sure I can, like, afford to pay him. And, like, revenue, we need to be profitable. That way, like, I can, like, pay our bills and stuff. But I, I'm not tracking our revenue. That's not, like, a big KPI for us. As long as we're profitable and we're making money, I'm good. My big KPI that I'm, like, striving after is the number of churches that we're working with. Mm. And I don't recommend every agency do this because then you start to discount things that you probably shouldn't do and that can help your bottom or hurt your bottom line. But for me, my heart is I want to work as, as many churches as possible. And I don't even remember what your original question was. Oh, our price point. Yes. I'm yes. trying to preface, I'm trying to preface why our prices are so low. Uh, so we charge a thousand dollars their first month mm -hmm. and then it's $500 a month after that. And then uh, church funnels, which is just a white labeled go high level. Uh, that's a hundred dollars a month separate that we have them also sign up for, uh, which has been good because that helps stickiness uh, of just having that extra revenue come in. And a lot of the times they'll come back and work with us. Like maybe they, they pause over the summer and they come back in the fall. Uh, so that's, that's our price point there, if that makes sense. Love it. Love it. So very cost effective, really driven towards how do we get more people into the church? How do we serve more churches? Um, do you have a mission number that you're shooting for? Like how many churches you're looking to serve? Yeah, so my goal last, uh, at our Christmas party last year, I told our team, which there was just, it was me, my wife, and then three team members and then their spouses. I told them that I wanted to finish the year at 200 churches. So I wanted to have 200 active churches that we were working with by the end of 2023. And today we have 171 out of that 200, and we're on. We're projected to br to break 200 either this month or like the first or second week in November. That's amazing. So we're way ahead of schedule there. And my goal for the agency is we want to have a thousand active clients by year five. So that would be by the end of 2027. If we start in 2022, by the end of 2027, we want to have a thousand active churches. Like that's. That's the mission. We're that's trying the to big, hairy, audacious goal. Yeah. One, one, maybe once we get to a thousand churches, I'll go sit on a beach and we're gonna relax a little bit. But until then, it's hustle and grind mode, trying to get a thousand churches. I love it. All right, so he's talked a little bit about what his program is, very clear what his niche is. We'd love to hear how you're landing clients. So massive acceleration from those first seven seedling clients to 176 plus clients, 200 plus now. Like. What is it that's working for you from a client acquisition perspective to get the attention of these churches, to get them on the sales call, and ultimately to get them to sign up for your services? Yeah, so a couple of things. One, I, I wrote a book. Uh, Josh recommends in his program to write a book that sets you up as an authority in your niche. And I mean, the root word of authority is author, right? And so I, I wrote a book, and here's a hack. For you guys now if you're a pastor listening to this mute, mute it for a second <laughs> but what i did to write this book is i recorded some training i did like a like a three-day virtual summit and then i had a pitch at the end uh to sign up for church candy well i took those trainings mm. i got them transcribed 
and gave them to a ghost writer and was like, here's all of the content, just make it like in the format of a book. And then they get back to me and we went back and forth, making sure it's my voice. And so I didn't like sit down and like hammer out a book, just pounding away on the keyboard. Um, I, I took the content I was already creating for the agency and wrote the book. And now once you have the book, I mean, that sets you up as an authority. Um, a couple of things I did. One, creating a lot of short form videos. Even mm -hmm. right now, I've got my cell phone right here recording me vertically so I can take anything I say and chop it up into clips to post on my Instagram and my TikTok. Love it. Uh, so creating a lot of short form content that just gives value to churches. Um, I've actually have an Instagram video that got over a million views. The video wasn't even about marketing or like Facebook ads per se. Um, the hook of the video, you can go to my Instagram and look at look at it. It's a it's pinned if you go to my reels. The hook was here's something you can do that guarantees to get new guests that come to your church to come back the next week. Mm. And then the the ninja hack in the video was have your lead pastor send a personalized video just thanking them for visiting your church and inviting them to come back next week. That was the hack. And it that video blew up and I got probably like close to 20,000 followers just from that one video uh, on my Instagram. And then people watched my other videos that did talk about marketing. And I had a call to action at the end of a lot of those videos saying, hey, go download uh, a free copy of my book or I used to do a free plus shipping offer. Uh, and, and so I would send people to the link in my bio and even like since I've been here at your house, I would get notifications that someone downloaded my book or ordered my book. Mm. And I'm not running ads right now promoting the book. I'm not doing anything. These are people that see my videos on TikTok or Instagram. <sighs> Sorry, guys, this is Josh's fault. <laughs> he gave me a Perrier, Perrier, Perrier right before we started. So I'm like all burpy. <laughs> but all of that being said, uh, that content, Instagram's algorithm and TikTok's algorithm keeps pushing those videos out. And I've got one of my sales guys here. How often on your sales calls do you talk to people that it's like, oh, I found Brady on TikTok or I found Brady on Instagram? Just about every sales call. Yeah, so just about every sales call, it's people saying they found us on TikTok or Instagram. Uh, and so that's like one of the biggest things I did is just consistently created content. I remember in May of 2022, I committed to posting one TikTok a day. Wow. One TikTok a day. And sometimes it would be like, hey, here's three things you can do to help your church's website. And then sometimes it would be, hey, here's a hack to get guests to come back the following week. Sometimes it wouldn't even be about marketing and it would just be like, hey, here's something I learned in ministry that could help you. And it would just be things that gave value. And it, it wasn't super, hey, come check me out. We do Facebook ads for churches. It, some of it was like, hey, here's how we're getting new guests to come to our church. If you want to learn more, I wrote a book about it. You can go get it for free. Don't mention the agency. I'm not pushy on that at all. Uh, and it is cool. Like I'm going to, the reason why I'm in Miami right now, I'm, I was invited to speak at a church conference. And whenever I go to these events, so many people come by the booth and like, Brady, I just saw you on my TikTok feed. I just saw you on Instagram. Uh, so I'm becoming, I, I hate saying this, no. but I'm becoming a micro celebrity in like the church world just from creating organic short form content. Um, that's been a huge thing for us. And what I've done from there is leverage the audience I've built on Instagram with Instagram ads. So I am one of the, uh, what is my role as a agency? Facebook ads coach. I am an eight yes. players coach. Yes, that I do. I helped out some figure agency with that. And one of the things that's helped us so much in our ad strategy is I can retarget people that watch my reels on Instagram with more ads on Instagram and on Facebook, inviting them to schedule a strategy session with my team. And so kind of the two biggest things that have helped us get new clients. Number one is creating organic content. Mm. And number two is using Facebook and Instagram ads, retargeting people that engage with that content, as well as taking a list of pastors, creating a lookalike audience and targeting that lookalike audience. That's like the two things that keeps my sales calendar full. 
to the tune of how many clients last month and the month before? So in August, we had about 50 clients sign up and then 30 in September. 50 in a single month. That's yes, tremendous. Five, five zero. Um, and oh, which a lot of that were, there, there were conversations. Would you say a lot of that was conversations that you might've had in June or July? Right. And uh, it's funny with pastors, a lot of them will take sabbatical on July. So I would send out an email to my list and I have like 3,000 people on my email list from people that have got my book. And I would probably get like 50 vacation autoresponders saying out of the office sabbatical, out of the office sabbatical. I, so the summertime was definitely a slow season for us, but it's like all of those conversations we did have in the summer, they decided to, like we kept following up with those, uh, those prospects and they eventually bought in August. And then September we had 30. Um, it is October 6th and we've already had like nine or 10 churches sign up this month. Wow. Uh, and it's Friday, the, the first week. So, um, man, God has just been a, given us a, a ton of favor, a ton of blessing. And like, I, I'm, yes, I, I can tell you guys the strategy I did, but like, honest, honestly, I'm not trying to be like one of those football players. Like I love CJ Stroud for the Texans. He starts every interview press conference. He's like, first off, I just want to give all the, all, all the glory to my savior, Lord Jesus Christ. But also, whenever I'm in the game, I'm just determined I'm doing it. So uh, I'm not trying to be like that, but like seriously, a lot of this is just grace from the Lord that he's like seriously blessed us with this. So good. So takeaways, guys, in terms of like positioning, um, he started, he created a book, right? And it was, you just kind of taken away, like you created a two day training and then had that transcribed. So it was really, it's a good book that a church pastor would read and be like, wow, I've got some good insights here. And they started cranking out content short form content predominantly to gain attention and draw people to go get that book, right? And of course there's other things in tandem to that, but that's kind of the, the two-step process yeah. that, that has kind of built the authority. Um, you do really good with, with short form content. And I yeah. think there's a big difference between long form, like what we're doing here is long form, right? We're, we're doing a long, hour long video that's gonna go up on YouTube, it's gonna go on iTunes. Um, and I think a lot of agencies think in terms of long form, but there's massive opportunity in short form. You've done some really cool stuff. Can you share some cool insights with the group, or with the listeners on what they're doing, what, what, how they should think about short form and how they can do better? Yeah, for sure. So uh, there's, a, there's a meme of Steen Buscemi, if you know who that is. He's the guy, he's got the really big eyes. And uh, the meme, he's like wearing a backwards hat and he's like in a high school with a skateboard. He's like, what's up fellow children or whatever? Like, and he's trying to fit in with like the kids that are younger. So here's some advice that I would give to an agency owner is you, you can't stick, stick out like a sore thumb, right? You, whenever you're creating short form content, you want it to match the style of content that people are used to seeing on Instagram and on TikTok. So what we do is I, whenever I come up with an idea, I create the video, not like I'm an agency owner, and this is sounds silly, but like I'm a TikToker. Like I want the videos to look like other videos that people see, because if it looks like an ad or a commercial, you're gonna stick out like a sore thumb and people are just gonna keep swiping. Right. Right. Um, so another thing that I see a lot of agency owners make the mistake of when they're creating short form content, the very first two seconds, you have to make it very clear that this video is for your prospect. So for example, like there's another guy that does Facebook ads for churches and I've, I've never met him. We're friends on Facebook. We follow each other on Instagram and he makes some short form content. And I saw one of his videos and it was like, here's the best thing you should do with your Facebook ads. So number one is da-da-da-da-da-da. And that's why for your church, he didn't say that this was for churches until like 25 seconds into the video. And so because of that, anyone can see that. And then by the time they see it's for churches, they're like, oh, I don't, this isn't for me. So they keep swiping. So if you go look at my Instagram reels and my TikToks, you're gonna notice the very first sentence I say always mentions pastors mm. or churches. So I say things call like- Call out that audience, right? Yeah, I, I call out the audience without saying, like, I don't say, hey churches or hey pastors, but what I do say is, hey, if you're a pastor, this is the best thing you should do for blank. Or here's what we do at our church to X, Y, and Z. 
or this is the biggest mistake I see pastors make with da 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 da. Right? I, I don't, if you just get straight into the content without it being clear who it's for, mm. then they're going to keep scrolling, right? Uh, on top of that, trim the fat. TikTok has created this generation of people that have the attention span of a squirrel, right? So if in the first few seconds you don't grab their attention, they're going to keep scrolling. If in the bulk of the video that you're making for your audience, if if you're not like holding their attention, if you're going on and on and chasing rabbits and your video is really long, people are going to lose interest and they're going to keep scrolling. And if you're someone that like consumes short form content regularly, if you're if you consume TikToks or you watch reels, observe yourself when you're scrolling. If you swipe past a video, ask yourself, why did I just mm. uh, what? Be a little meta and think, okay, why did I just keep scrolling? What what about that video made me swipe away? And then don't do the, that, right? So you want to um, like Mr. Beast, if you know him, he's like the biggest YouTuber right now. He does a really good job with his content at keeping people engaged through the whole video. He'll post a 15 minute video that has like 40 million views, 140 million views. And that was a 10 minute video, mm -hmm. right? And so I, I like to study these content creators because it'll give me some insight on creating content that fuels the agency, right? Um, like one of my favorite podcasts that I would recommend business owners to listen to, if you're wanting to create content, uh, is Colin and Samir. Hmm. They are two guys that make video for content creators, for YouTubers, essentially. And what I, what I, why I like listening to that is because that makes me a better content creator. Hmm. And if I can see myself as a content creator, not an agency owner, and I just create content, the, the business will come, that will grow. I need my goal needs to be to give value and create content that my audience would like to consume. And if, if they enjoy that, if they like that content, then they're going to ask for more. Right. And that's why it's great having the book. Cause I give them a call to action. It's like, Hey, if you want to learn more about this stuff, I wrote a book about it. It's free. Go check it out. Like I think Alex Ramosi does a great job with that. Oh, yeah. He's kind of shifted because he owned an agency gym lunch and now he's shifted to being almost just a content creator. Like my friends that don't even have businesses know who Alex Ramosi is, mm -hmm. and I knew him before he before he had his Instagram and YouTube channel, and that was all big. Like I was on Zoom calls with him whenever he had Alan, and like I I, I knew him from that. And to see what he has done, he's done a great example of sh take, having that shift of I'm not a business owner trying to get deals from Instagram. I'm a content creator trying to provide value mm. and it sounds silly, but to be an influencer and to create this content, those are some things that I've done that I think has kind of helped, uh, helped build that authority because people don't look at me as, Oh yeah, Brady owns church. Community. They look at me as like, Oh yeah, Brady makes Instagram videos and he, he makes TikToks. uh, people in the, in the church world that is. So good. Lots of great insights there. Takeaways, post them in the comments. Um, become a student, right? Be, like go watch TikTok videos, go watch Instagram videos. Like if your video doesn't look like the ones that people watch, you're not going to get any traction, right? You can post every single day and it won't resonate. Um, so kind of like watch that, study it. If they want to look you up, cause I know you're, you're building, you're following, what's the best place for them to look you up to, to kind of study how you're creating your videos? Yeah. Uh, I'm almost to 40,000 subscribers on Instagram. Go subscribe. So, so go sub, uh, subscribe, go give me a follow on Instagram, just at Brady Sticker. Um, I create all my content from my personal account. Um, I created the Church Candy account, but I just found that my personal brand is easier to build than the one from the business. And so definitely go check that out there. Any, any tips along how long those types of videos should be? Should you shoot, you know, landscape horizontal? And how, how much can you repurpose from like a situation like this versus actually creating unique content for that specific platform and that specific topic. Yeah, for sure. So a couple of things there, all of your reels and TikToks should be vertical. So if I was using Josh's fancy DSLR camera, I would flip it sideways. Uh, what I do for my podcasts, I do repurpose some of those. Uh, you wanna look for, when you're looking for like clips to take from your podcast, 
you don't want to just look for like good insights. You want to find moments in the podcast that would be good hooks that would get someone to stop scrolling. Mm. Right? Because the, it doesn't matter what you talk about after that if they don't stop scrolling to watch. And so that's what I've kind of had to train my team on is like when we're looking for clips from the podcast, don't necessarily just look for good moments from the podcast. Look for, look for things that we say that would get someone to stop scrolling. Um, when you do that, that has just made repurposing long form content really well. What I do anytime I'm interviewed on a podcast or even if I am interviewing someone on my podcast, I take my phone and I press record just like this. And then I set it down on my desk and just have it there just so I can also take clips for my cell phone. That's a popular trend you'll see cool. people that are on podcasts. They have like a, another camera or even just their cell phone vertically off to the side that they're not looking at. Kind of gives you that like, documentary feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's another popular trend. Uh, and, and then as far as like how long the videos should be, I always – this is something that my English teacher used to tell me whenever uh, I was in high school, which is crazy that she would say this. She was an older, very conservative lady. Uh, she would say that your content should be like a woman's skirt, uh, long enough to cover the topic, short enough to keep it interesting. Uh, and so I, I kind of use that as a rule of thumb, but lean a lot more into like, it needs to be as short as possible. Like cut out all the fluff. If, um, if I remove a sentence from a video and it's still the video still makes sense, I'm removing that sentence. Does that make sense? Yeah. So great insights there. Great takeaways. I'm gonna be taking that tip. I'm gonna start to put myself on there and see yeah. if I can create some magic for my short form stuff because I've never never really done that before, but that makes a lot of sense. Um, okay, so we talked about how you land clients, we talked about how you've grown. We'd love to kind of shift gears to, to operations. Yeah. I mean, this is not an easy thing to work with hundreds of churches to launch them to, you know, like run ads and things. Talk to us about what the operation looks like and how you're able to systematize it and, and, and consistently deliver the goods. Yeah. So everything is white labeled. I just send it off to Agency <laughs> Elevation. No, I'm just kidding. Agency Elevation is great. If you're looking for a white label provider, go check them out. But no, we do everything in house. Uh, I kind of stole from, I say I stole, I'm the one that developed at Cairo Candy the model where our account managers are, they handle communications with the clients as well as building out the ads. Mm. That's very easy to do if all of the ads are very, very similar, if not exactly the same. Does that make sense? Because like they just need an SOP on, here's how to create a campaign. Here's the ad text we use. Here's the type of images we need from the client. So all of our ads for the churches are almost exactly the same. Mm. And because of that, it's make, made it really easy for an account manager to be the person that actually sets up and manages the ads. And then we have a scene, we have like senior, uh, he's like a, I don't know, we haven't even given Corey like an official title, title, but we have a guy that's been just, he's really good at doing ads and he meets one-on-one -on -one with the team every week. So anyone that has really high cost per leads uh, he'll go over that with them. And then we have a guy from Cairo Candy, shout out Andrew, who I've started contracting. Anytime we have clients and cost really super high, we've tried some different things rather than them coming to me and me trying to put eyes on it, trying to figure it out. Uh, they go to Andrew uh, from Cairo Candy to kind of give some insight and consult with them there. And so operation wise, the, the main thing we hire for is an account manager. And their job is to set up the ads for the clients as well as get on Zoom with them and send them reports and communicate with them. That has worked really well for us so far, continuing to scale. And then even like guys, like one of my sales guys, he also manages a handful of clients too. And that's been able to give them a solid base salary to where I'm able to kind of do that to where he has a base salary plus commission and doing things like that has been able to kind of help us scale. And so uh, I, I realized whenever we were trying to take on new clients, like, I, I, okay, I had a goal of 200 clients this year. So like I did the math and was like, okay, that means I need to sign up like 20 new clients a month and then our churn needs to stay below 5%. And I was, and I did the math and I was like, okay, if we're gonna sign up 20 clients a month, that means I need to be having like 50 sales conversations a month. Right. And, and that means 
Okay. Uh, I also, I don't work Fridays. You said I have a four hour work week. I, I stopped working Fridays. That's my Sabbath. That's a family day. I hang out with my wife, Sarah, and my That's son, amazing. River. And so now I have four days a week, four weeks in a month to take to have 50 sales conversations. That means I can't, I can't help the team operations side. I can't help with the fulfillment. So that's whenever I realized, okay, I need to hire Tom. Thomas is here with us. Uh, he's my one of the very first, uh, the very first sales hire we ever made, and that kind of removed that bottleneck of okay, now it can me and Thomas can both take sales calls. Well, then I was like, okay, I need to focus. Uh, I'm traveling. I'm going to speak at conferences. I don't have. We can't depend on my calendar uh, if we want to hit our goals. We can't depend on my calendar to take sales calls. So we brought on another sales guy. And now we got to where I had to kept, I kept having to turn my ads off because the sales team's calendar would be booked out for like a whole week. And so I was like, dang, well, if we want to grow, like I've got people on my team now, they need, they need to get more clients, right? Based on the salaries I'm paying them or based on what their pay structure is, I need to get them more clients. Uh, otherwise, like it's, profitability wise like we're just not going to be a good place so we need to be signing up you know 30 to 50 clients a month well well now i need to hire a third sales guy so we just had a third sales guy that started this week and uh man it's been awesome it, it's it's a very quick very quick growth and here's the thing about churches i wouldn't necessarily recommend that as a niche for a couple reasons one like you have to be like in it and in it really well for it to work uh, you can't just be someone that goes to, to church on Sundays and be like, I'm going to help churches. Like I, I went from being on full-time staff to helping other churches. And two, you're not just getting the approval from one business owner. You're getting approval for like an entire board. And so that has kind of made the sales process uh, a lot longer than mm. if I was just working, trying to work with a chiropractor. But one of the big plus, one of the big positives of working with churches, we found that for example, a chiropractor, their income varies based on how chiro candy performs. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So if chiro candy does really well, that chiropractor's income goes up. Let's take a pastor, for example, of a church. Their salary stays the same regardless of how church candy performs for them. Mm -hmm. So they have a set salary, and so it's retention for church candy has honestly been really well as long as because from from the church's side of things they're not tracking things as closely and they're, and they're seeing new faces on sunday and they're asked hey josh how did you hear about our church oh saw saw you on facebook saw you on instagram they they immediately connect the dots to us they're happy they're vibing they're excited and and so because of that and because the pastor's salary isn't like determined how church candy performs uh i, I think that's helped us a lot in keeping clients longer than say a chiropractor or a plumber, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, I think it makes a lot of sense. It probably applies to any nonprofit type client that, that somebody might work with uh, where the, the person's income isn't directly proportionate to the outcomes of the service. Yeah, absolutely. Very, very cool. So um, you mentioned a couple of things there I wanna get into, the hiring a sales team, which I think is a really smart move if you're, if you're running an agency probably got good at sales and that's one of those things you think you need to hang on to um how did how did um things accelerate when you were able to remove yourself from the sales process um, and have someone else taking those sales calls man it was great because truthfully i don't think i'm that good at sales <laughs> and like honestly if you are a pastor that I, I think i shared this on my personal facebook you wish that you talked to me because I would probably give you a better deal than my team was because I'm strict with my team. Like, Hey, these are the prices we need to set. But because I'm so like growth oriented and like, it's not profit driven. It's like purpose driven. I'm like, you know what, man, we'll, we'll get that taken care of. Don't worry about it. Let's just get you on board. And I cut, I would cut extra deals that I really shouldn't have, uh, but I don't give my team permission to. So it, it for me, it's been good to have that team, like have that structure in, uh, and they're continuing to sign up clients. And it, it was so cool being like me being out and about this week, I was in Orlando consulting with another business and it was awesome. Just getting texts while I was there. Boom. Thomas just signed up a client. Boom. Chris just signed up a client. Uh, and so that is such a cool thing as an agency owner, 
having the business grow. And I don't know who these guys are. Mm -hmm. I've never talked to them. And uh, that's been really cool. So it, it's been freeing for me because now I'm able to really focus on growing the business. Uh, because if it's if you are the only person taking sales calls in your agency, then the growth of your agency is dependent on your availability. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You are the bottleneck. There's only so many days in the week. There's only so many days in a month. And if you really want to scale and you're filling up your calendar, good luck overseeing operations. Good luck going to those industry events you want to go to. It's awesome because I'm able to go to an event this week and sales are still happening back home and I don't have to worry about that. Whereas before, if, if I'm going to an event and it was just me doing sales calls, well, I hope this event works well. I hope we sign people up at this event. And even if they sign up several weeks or months later, no one's signing up that specific week. So it was hard for us to reach our goals and it was really hard for us to grow. But now being able to build a sales team, being able to remove myself from sales has been great for our agency because I'm able to focus on the business. And now the growth of our business isn't based on my availability. And that just now I'm, I, I don't have a job, I have a business, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I agree. I think it's one of the most, powerful, most empowering feelings when, as your agency grows, when you step out of sales. And that's usually the thing most agencies hold on to when deals start to happen without you being on the call. Yeah. And it's just like, wow, this thing is growing and I'm not personally talking to every last client. Um, guys, if you have questions for Brady, post them in the comments. We're, we're coming to our hour. So I, I wanna make sure if you got a pressing question, we get a chance to ideally answer it. Uh, one comment here says, lots of inspiration. Um, I can't see who it was and say, Br Brady is my spirit animal. <laughs> so they're, they're loving this. Um, recruitment. You've built this team relatively quickly. It seems like you've built some really good talent into your team. Like what, what are your strategies for finding A players, talent for the team, at getting them on board and getting them efficient? Yeah, so what I don't recommend um, is if you hire from your personal network, you hire your personal friends. Uh, for us, I hired a handful of people that we go to church with. You can have really high highs because you like the people culturally, you know they're gonna fit in. You can also have really low lows because you have, if they're inevitably gonna drop the ball. No one is perfect, mistakes happen. So you're gonna have to have hard conversations. Uh, luckily we haven't, at Church Candy, we haven't let anyone go yet. And there's, as of right now, there's no one on pace that like, it looks like we're gonna have to let go. Uh, but for me, what we did is I did, I, I wanted to find people that understood ministries and understood churches, because I can teach them about marketing. I can teach them those other things. I wanted high character, hard workers. We're all remote. Uh, everyone lives in Texas, but like everyone works from home. And so they needed, I, I needed to be able to trust that they can do their job without me micromanaging them. Mm. And so the people that we hired, it was a lot of people that uh, I, I went to church with and I definitely don't recommend that because then when you, when you make that first hire, then other people are like, oh, Brady's hiring a church candy. Yeah, and then yeah, other people are asking for jobs that probably wouldn't be the best fit. And then you have to have hard, hard conversations. So I, I don't necessarily recommend doing that. Uh, but some of like, man, some of our best team members uh, have been people that I went to Bible school with that went, we went our separate ways and they went to the actual, the secular workforce and, uh, but they still had a heart for ministry and they still wanted to serve the church in some way, but didn't necessarily want to work for a church. Uh, those guys have been awesome. We've got several people on our team that are like that. And even Thomas here, uh, him and I were youth pastors in the same city mm -hmm. together. Uh, and then he ended up getting a sales job full time uh, somewhere else. And I was like, dude, go, don't sell for them, go sell for me. And uh, so now it's been awesome to have him a part of the team. And as far as my recommendations for hiring, uh, what we, just because we've done it doesn't mean you should copy it. Uh, Cause what we've done like, wouldn't necessarily work for everyone. So, I mean, that's what we did. As far as like recruitment goes, uh, some of the best hires that we've made in Cairo Candy, the other agency, are from our team's personal network. Mm -hmm. So we asked our team. Friends of team members. Yeah, we've asked our team, okay, you know what it takes to work here. You know the kind of person we're looking for. They're gonna recommend A players because they know their, their neck is on the line, mm -hmm. right? Because if, if they recommend someone and they're, 
they're slackers and they don't do any work and they don't respond to Slack messages. And if they're not a good fit, that's going to come back on them, right? And then it's like, oh man, I can't believe Josh recommended me this guy. Right. And, and so honestly, once, once you start to build the team, hiring from their personal network, uh, that has worked really well for us. But those first few hires, um, it, for us, it was for my personal network. And then scaling the team, man, you've got to, you have to delegate if you want to elevate in your business. Mm -hmm. I know I'm starting to sound like a pastor, like making these rhyming words, but it, it's so true because I've had to give up some things like taking those one-on-one -on -one meetings. I knew that, man, I just know Facebook ads so well. I'm so, uh, so quick with it. I can come up with new strategies. I have, if we want to grow, I have to raise up a leader to be able to take that over. Otherwise, as we grow, well, the first problem was we're signing up so many clients where I'm having so many sales calls and I don't have time to do anything else. Then it got to a point where, well, now I'm spending all my time doing one-on-one -on -one calls with the team and we keep getting new team members. So that's another hour blocked off of my calendar. And so being able to raise up a leader that can oversee the team has been crucial. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the times as business owners, we have this excuse of, oh, but they're not going to do it as good as me. You're right. They, it, they're, they're not at first, but I promise you this, they're, if you can do it at hundred percent and they just do it at 80%, their 80% is better than your hundred percent because your hundred percent, your hundred percent is better off growing the business mm. and rather than just doing the day-to-day -day operations or the sales. And so agencies out there, you need to get out of your, you've got to take a step out and you've got to get out of sales. You've got to get out of operations if you want to grow. And eventually, if you've got the right person on the right seat in the bus, their 80% is going to pass up what you thought your 100% was. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? So I hope that was a good no, I, I love that. I think it's, it's always interesting to see the path through the stages. I think you had a great background working at Kyrocade where you had already built an operation. You already built a team. Uh, just walk us through the key hires. Was it removed from sales, then operations, then account management? Or like kind of what were the, the stair steps if you think about your accountability chart and how you removed yourself from key roles? Yeah, for us, we were hiring account managers first uh, because I could do sales all day long, but if we don't have someone, if I don't have anyone to manage <laughs> those accounts I'm signing up, then it didn't matter, hmm. right? So definitely we hire more account managers than any other position. So remove yourself from operations first. Yep. So remove myself from operations. I remember back in January of 2022, when we first started, I wasn't doing any operations. I, I handed all that off to this. I trained Lexi to build out Facebook ads. I trained her how to track the KPIs. I trained her how to communicate and hop on Zoom with clients. Uh, so the only thing I did, I would do sales. And then after the sales call, if they said yes, I would onboard them right then, send an email to Lexi, and then she took, she took it over. I didn't set up the ads. I didn't do any of that. She handled all of that. And so, that was kind of the first step. And then I kept hiring more people in that operations department, more account managers. And then it got to where, all right, now we, we've got people that can handle the fulfillment. If we want to keep growing, if we want to keep reaching our goals, man, I've got to have, I've got to have more salespeople, mm. right? Because if you just, I'm a big proponent of like, be very logical with your goal setting. Don't just shoot for the stars and try your best. No set a goal and then work backwards and figure out, okay, what, how many, how many strategy sessions do I need to have if I want to sign up this many clients a month? And then look at your calendar and say like, can I physically take this many strategy sessions or what I want to? Yeah, exactly. Or would you want to? And so that's what we had to do. And that's what inevitably brought us to starting to build the sales team. Love it. Love it. And I think that reverse engineering from not just how many strategy sessions we need, but also figuring out what marketing strategy we're going to use to get the number of appointments we need. And then what, what strategy we're going to use to get enough opt-ins to yeah, yeah. have that domino effect. Absolutely. So just take your goal and work backwards. And we even do this with our churches. So, uh, we, and I, and I encourage my sales team to do this on the sales calls. So if you go to churchcandy.com slash calculator, there is a full calculator that I actually had ChatGPT make for us. Like, oh, nice. Uh, I, I knew the calculations. It used to just be a Google sheet, but then I took all the calculations, gave it to ChatGPT. Uh, me and him went back and forth, <laughs> and uh, he wrote the code. ChatGPT wrote the code for a legitimate calculator that will give churches, okay, if you want this many new guests, 
this is how much we need to spend on ads. Mm -hmm. And so they put in the, uh, it's church candy. People are asking what's the link for the calculator, churchcandy.com slash calculator. Uh, what churches can do is they can put in, okay, how many new guests do you want? If I want 50 new guests this month, and then it asks, okay, how many new, uh, how many people are you expecting to come with each family? What's your estimated show rate? What's your estimated cost per lead? Or we use the verbiage cost per plan your visit. That's the call to action that we use for churches because people are planning a visit to their Sunday service. And you put all that information in, press calculate, and then it writes it out saying, if you want 50 new guests, if 50% of the people that plan a visit show up, and this is how much you're spending per plan your visit, then you need to spend this much money to get this many new guests. And so it just lays it out for them. So we don't just do that in our agency. We coach our churches to do the same thing, set your goals, and then work backwards and figure out what you need to do to reach that goal. Love it. And a great lead magnet, it sounds like. Do you yeah. have them opt in for that? Or it's just you no, it's, no. Like, go check out the calculator and, and yeah. yeah. No, if if I if I made that an opt-in, then I would have all of these other marketing agencies that do stuff with churches try right. to go check it out. So it's like, no, just go to our website, it's there, and you can that's like one of the most viewed uh, pages on our website. Mm. It's home and then the calculator. So good, so good guys. So reverse engineer it, put the systems in place, remove yourself from the operations. Uh, and it's cool how you kind of have your account managers do the operations. So they're not just talking to the client, they're actually managing the campaign. So your, your cost of goods sold is, is very tied to the number of clients and to the account managers that you have. Yeah, absolutely. Amazing. I wanted to see if we missed any questions. It, it doesn't look like we did. Um, Congratulations on your on your growth, your success, um, not just you know in revenue, but also in the impact. Imagine how many churches are now getting more people, and and the gospel is being grown, going from being a youth pastor and just like working at one church to now serving hundreds and hundreds of churches. It's amazing the ripple effect of the the impact that you're having. Yeah, I mean it's really cool because I remember when I was working for Cairo Candy, which I'm still involved in that agency today, but. Uh, and we would have a chiropractor say like, oh man, we had this lady come in and she was gonna get back surgery and then she found our practice from Cairo Candy's ads and, and now she was able to cancel her back surgery. And like, I remember thinking, oh man, that's so cool to hear that. But it's just something completely different when a pastor's like, man, we baptized 11 people this past Sunday and every single one of them found our church from wow. the church candy ads. That's like huge. hearing testimonies like that, bro, like that makes my heart happy. And then I tell the pastor, hey, can I press record on Zoom and you say that again so I can use that in some more ads? Absolutely. So, uh, man, stuff like that is really cool. Super powerful. So kind of as we, as we wrap up, if you had you know, one piece of wisdom for that agency on, regardless if they're at 10K or 20K or 50K, and they're trying to get to the next level, um, what would that be like? What would be your, your message to that agency on us trying to just break through? Yeah, I, what I would say is set your goal, work backwards, and then don't be afraid to spend money investing in your agency. Like for example, in the past, I think the past 60 days, we've spent right around $20,000 in Facebook ads, which is crazy to me. I look at that and think like, oh my gosh, in 60 days, like that's, that's how many team members, how many account managers could that be? But then we look at how many churches signed up from that and the revenue that that brought in, the ROI on that is huge. Like I think we probably got fifty thousand dollars in MRR from those that twenty k we invested in ads brought fifty k, not just fifty thousand dollars, fifty thousand dollars in monthly recurring revenue, right? And so don't be afraid to invest in yourself. Don't be afraid to invest in your agency and the growth of it. Now don't just blow money like get get some ads together, go through Josh's seven eight figure agency program. I have trainings in there on how we set up our Facebook ads. Uh, once we find running ads, we scale it to the moon. I start spending hundreds of dollars a day on like ad sets that win and it fills up my team's calendar like almost immediately. It's, it's, it's crazy stuff. But once you get a, a great acquisition strategy on being able to get new clients, you scale that to the moon and you just get the right people in the right seat of the bus and that's what we did and I'm, I'm believing other agencies if we could do it i'm 25 i barely have i i do have a college degree but like don't tell dallas baptist university this <laughs> but like i was not a good student and this was before uh, chat gpt could write essays but i'm just going to leave it at that and say i do have a piece of paper that says i got a degree but that doesn't mean anything uh if i could do it this 25 year old kid from lumberton texas then you can do it too 
Good stuff, man. Great insights, great shares. Guys, if you got value from today's interview, go subs- you know, go uh, follow Brady on Instagram because he wants to grow that following. If they want to connect with you further, like, what would be the best way to connect with you? And- yeah, uh, shoot me an Instagram uh, DM. Uh, I get those directly. If it shows up even in requests, we have that connected with our high level account. So I even, we get those messages on there as well. So send me an Instagram DM, love to get connected there. Thanks so much for listening or watching, however you happen to be participating. Be sure to send some love to Brady for, for, you know, for his success, but also for his willingness to come on here and just share openly like what's working with them, how he's grown his agency. Um, and if you'd like more ideas and strategies on how you can grow your digital marketing agency, be sure to subscribe to this channel and tune in for future interviews just like this. Brady, congratulations again. Thanks so much Thanks, for being man. here, man. Good stuff. Absolutely. See you later, everybody.